So continuing on with functions, we now want to explore how to get our functions to do more interesting things than simply have print statements. So we're going to start here on the left with the idea of function input. So we think of parameters as a way to provide input to a function. We say input meaning the function needs to do some sort of calculation or store a variable or look at some data up or whatever it might need to do and we want to use it in different cases and so we like to provide it with different sets of input to get a different sort of result. So some examples that we've seen so far, we've used rand range. So rand range of 3 comma 10. So this is two different parameters. We've got the 3 and the 10 and we know that when you put in 3 comma 10, given those two uh, parameters into the function or arguments in this case, what we end up getting is a number from 3 up to but not including 10. Another example will be the print function. We use print all the time and we see that the print function takes uh, an argument or a parameter and it prints that to the screen. And so let's look at how we can do this in our own functions. So what we basically do is when you define the function, there is your opportunity to list your parameters. So you simply list them separated by commas just like that. You can list as many as you need. You can have none, as we've already seen, or you can have multiple parameters. So that's what it looks like in the definition. And then when you call the function, you pass in the, the argument you want to pass in. Now, it is, it is a subtle distinction that we refer to parameters as the sort of general template or placeholder values that we use in the function definition. And we use the term argument, meaning the actual value that your calling function is passing. So let's look at an example. So here we have this simple function. It takes one parameter, message. And remember, message is a placeholder. So I like to think of it as it's basically just a box. It's a container, right? And everywhere you see that variable name, you have that same container. And so what you're doing is when you say, hi, mom, you're basically taking this value here, the argument, and you're just passing it into the function definition. And then everywhere you had this box, it gets replaced with whatever string you passed in, hi mom, and then your output is over here. So that the input argument is being passed in to the function parameter. Another example? All right? Showing you just two different two different versions. Here I have a function called display twice. So it does the same thing, it just concatenates two strings. So here in this case, we've got our function parameter in our definition, and we're just simply going to have that placeholder or that uh, place uh, parameter variable. And every time you'd call display twice, it's going to take that value. It's going to copy it to the function parameter, and then it's going to give you this output, which is just simply the concatenation of our two strings. So what we're able to do is we're able to take some input from main or our calling function, pass it in as an argument, pass the argument in to the parameter of the function, and we get something to print out. Now, often we want to pass in more, more kinds of values than just one. And so Python uses a few different techniques, but one that we're going to really focus on is positional parameters. So positional parameter basically says that the order that you pass the arguments in is the order that they'll be put in into the parameters, right? So for example, we have this function that says, print happy birthday, name, you are, age. And so when we call the function, we pass in the first argument to the first parameter, name, and the second one goes to the second parameter. And this order is determined automatically by, by Python, simply by where it falls in the list. So this would be item one, this would be item two, um, and it's based purely on, on the position. So let's look at an example. So here we have the similar kind of function, right? Same same function, but let's look at three different calls. So we have Chuck twenty five, Sheila forty five, Kevin Brianna thirty five. Now watch what happens. The first time, success, no problem. We're able to take tick tw Chuck twenty five and it prints it out. Second time. Sheila 45, also no problem. The third call is going to generate an error because we have 1, 2, 
three arguments, but we only have one, two parameters. So it's going to give us an error. Another example with multiple parameters here is display sum four and eight. So again, the four is going to go to the first parameter, and the eight is going to go to the second parameter. And our function is simply going to add those two, and we're going to get 12. Now, if you're thinking about this, you might think, how does Python know what kind of variable it is? And unfortunately, it doesn't. So we have to be a little bit careful about that. So I'll give you an example. In this case, there is a plus here, right? Now, the function is called display sum, so we as a human would think, well, it's going to add those two numbers, but because the plus sign functions for two strings, there is no error, right? So we're able to do this with no problem. The output is not obviously a number, but it is syntactically correct, so there's no error. The problem is, if we're not careful, this isn't always going to work. So look at this example. Here we have dog and 9876. So what happens, unfortunately, is we get an error because this is a string and this is an int. And as we know, that's an error. Without any conversion, it doesn't know how to add those together. So we do need to be mindful of this and kind of consider these problems on our own, either by writing code carefully or leaving comments which explain how it's supposed to work. So one other kind of neat feature about input variables is the idea of default parameters. So if you want, you can call a function without passing in any arguments, uh, and you can set a default value for your parameter. So if you feel like you don't need to pass in the argument, but you want some sort of standard way the function will operate, you can do that. And we've actually seen this in a bunch of cases, but the one that we've seen it the most in is with print. Right, the first week of class, we learned that if you have n, you say n equals something or other, you can change the default value. And we know that by default, n is going to be slash n. And so when we change it to be space or star or anything else, we override that behavior. So one quick thing to note is that you can get yourself into a little bit of trouble if we're not careful about assigning default parameters. So once we have one default parameter that we use, in the parameter list, we're going to have to assign them all. So let's just take a look at an example. So here we go. We have this uh, birthday function, and there is one default parameter here, name equals Cooper. And there's another default parameter, age equals 11. And so we're going to call it the first time the same way that we're used to calling functions, Tracy48. So Tracy is going to go here to the name parameter. 48 is going to go to the age parameter. Now, the second time we call it, and we notice that we get that. We get Tracy, and we get 48. Okay. Now, the second time, we're going to pass in Carter, but we're not going to pass in any number. So what happens? Well, we see here is Carter. That's my input. But what's the age going to be? Well, there was no age passed in in the function, so it's going to use the default value of 11. And finally, the third time, when we call this with no inputs, it's going to use the default name of Cooper and the default age of 11. 